Welcome back to the Kings of Horror. Where every day, Ryan Turek and I are reviewing a different theatrically released Stephen King horror film. Today we're going to look at the 1983 nature run amok Stephen King film, Cujo, starring Dee Wallace Stone and Danny Pintaro before he went on to Who's the Boss? Woo! Cujo is the tale of a St. Bernard who goes sticking his nose where it doesn't belong and gets bitten by a bat. The poor pooch gets rabies, goes on a killing spree, and ultimately traps mother and son, Donna and Tad, in their jalopy of a car. What ensues is a battle for survival as Donna attempts to escape Cujo and bring Tad to safety. Now, while the concept of Cujo is really strong, it falls really flat for me. Uh, there's too much melodrama, uh, and there's just not enough happening in film. Cujo only works for me when Cujo's actually on camera, tearing shit up. You know, I actually love this movie. Do you? I do. I think this is a really, really great movie. The melodrama you're talking about, I think, is actually Ugh, pretty effective lifetime. character development. It is, but lifetime that's... Lifetime material. But, but that's what makes it so great. Yeah. I think there are too many horror movies where the horror cuts in so early mm -hmm. that it feels like it was inevitable. I think that worked in The Shining, but in a lot of horror movies, they don't pull it off. In Cujo, you spend enough time away from the horror that when the horror kicks in, yeah. it's that much more shocking and unexpected. And what I really love about this film, and there's a, there's a storytelling trope mm -hmm. or, or device that Stephen King uses all the time. I call it uh, the false cavalry charge. Oh, yes. Where, yes. where someone's yeah, yeah, yeah. in a horrific situation, <laughs> situation yeah. and then you keep cutting to someone who's in a position to help them. <laughs> They're trying to get there. They're like Scatman Carruthers in The Shining, yeah. and then they get there, and then clah! And Cujo is nothing but that. Mm -hmm. Once yeah. D. Wallace Stone, uh, now D. Wallace, uh, is trapped in that car with her kid, it's just they just keep waiting. The mailman's going to come. The mailman's going to come. Cut to the mailman. Oh, don't forget. They said don't deliver the mail. <laughs> oh, right. I almost went. It's nothing but that. And it's really funny. The whole movie plays like a sick joke See, the played on D. Wallace. And I think it's funny, and I think it's scary, and I think it works. I think that all of that stuff that you're talking about are, uh, you know, just bumps in the road that just kill the momentum. They kill the pacing for me. Uh, I didn't like it. I don't like it, bottom line. I mean, I think that if they redid Cujo today, uh, you know, you do like your standard, you know, 10 minute setup of all, you know, mm -hmm. characters, you root yourself emotionally in the mother and son, and then let the director just have a blast with it, just like being around this car and nowhere else and with just the dog. You said it yourself, though, I think that would be very standard. And what I like about Cujo is mm -hmm. that it plays in a different way than a lot of other films. Mm -hmm. It's very simple, but it takes its time until it doesn't anymore. Yeah. And things get really, really intense. Yeah. So I actually love this movie. And in fact, I give Cujo four kings. I give Cujo two kings. Sorry. I think that is just pretty substandard stuff. I, I think it's, uh, it's a delightful uh, Don't get treat. me wrong, though. The Cujo stuff is fantastic, though. Damn right. All right. Well, while Bibbs and I disagree on uh, Cujo, let's see how we fare tomorrow when we look at David Cronenberg's The Dead Zone. <laughs>